tonight will be able to um, see it and you can also go back to it if you'd like to remember some of the points that you've heard it's going to be on the master recycler youtube channel um, as well as the master recycler presentations page and the website um, the slides are are there as well um, so you um, will be able to to find that as well um, I do have closed captioning available for folks who, um, that may make it easier for you to hear. Um, and so you can just click down below. It might automatically be on on your computer. And if you don't like it, you can click it off. If you want it, you can click it on um, so that you can hear um, and read at the same time what they're saying. It's a, I think it's, it's not very good in Spanish, um, so, but it, it's great for English. Um, if, if you've arrived late and um, you wanting to listen in Spanish, there's a globe at the bottom that you can click or three points if you're on your phone um, and you can click on that and look for it in Espanol. Si ustedes han llegado un poquito tarde y quiere escuchar en Espanol, se puede bu um, buscar para un globo o um, si tiene compu computador o tres puntos a la derecha, dijo Ricardo, um, and then uh, se puede conectar con el español. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's trying to translate my Spanish with a tra transcriber. That's great. So uh, with that all in mind, I thought it'd be fun before we get started to um, to do a little getting to know each other again and connecting. It's been a while since we've been in master recycler space. Um, so welcome everyone um, to master recycler's first night of winter gathering. We're gonna have a second one next week. That's just, just for fun. We're just for getting to know each other. Um, and I'll send a link out next week for that one. Um, but I would love it if everyone could turn your cameras on, if you can. I know some folks have connected um, in a way that, that's hard to do, but if you can connect on, I would love for you to show yourself. I want to see Master Cyclers in the room. Yay. Yay, it's so great to see everyone. Hello, hello. Wow, we have got folks from way back. <laughs> and uh, some folks from the most recent class in class 79. Um, so welcome, welcome. Um, I would love for us to, there's a fun game that I would like us to just play just to get to know each other a little bit again and see who's in the room. Um, oh, there's somebody waiting in the waiting room. Um, so um, I, what we're gonna do, I know I had you all turn your cameras on, but you're gonna turn all your cameras off again. And when I say something that is something that you're like, yeah, that's me, um, then you can turn your cameras back on um, so that we all can kind of um, see who's in the room a little bit. So everyone turn your cameras off. All right, so, oops, is so, how strange they should be working. Um, so everybody in the room who lives on the west side of our region, turn your cameras on. Okay, I don't know if you can hear me, but I can't, try. I don't know how to do that. Okay, that's, then you can say, hey, that's me. <laughs> I, I live in, yeah, I, I'm on the west side. Okay, who's speaking so we can know this, your name? This is Helen. Hi, from Helen. Back September, a couple years yeah. ago. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. Great. Welcome, Helen. <laughs> so, all right. So, we have Billy, I thought you were on the northeast side. Are you on the west side? Oh, I'm northeast. Yeah. It depends on where you think. <laughs> east west. West, side, <laughs> west side of our region, west of the West Hills. Excellent. Okay. All right. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Shannon, sometimes there. All right. Everyone, close your, your um, cameras off again. How about people who live um, in Clackamas County or work in Clackamas County? <laughs> Tammy here. Yay, there's the Clackamas crowd. Yep, Tammy, uh, that's excellent, thank you. Um, all right, now let's close your screens again. 
And let's see people who live in East County in Multnomah, East County, East or, or even outer East Portland would be all right. <laughs> the East side. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Welcome. Welcome. It's great to see you. All right, one more time. Let's close it off and let's let's see the inner parts of Portland, northeast, inner parts of southeast, downtown, northwest. Yay! <laughs> all right, good to see you all. Welcome, welcome. It's really great to see you. Um, so um, I am um, one. How I, you can turn your your cameras all back on again. I want to see your beautiful faces. <laughs> so I have a few announcements I'm going to make, and then we are going to get to get started with our presenters. Um, so um, the first I, I already mentioned, we do have another gathering next week. I decided to double it up this winter. Um, next week is just going to be a focus on um, getting to know each other, have fun, be, building master cycler community. Um, we will have time for breakout sessions as well as um, talking about projects that you're doing if you want to self-organize and do some, some around that. But it's really especially just to celebrate and be together. Um, so um, keep an eye out. You should have seen that in the Master Cycler newsletter, but I will be sending out the link to Master Cycler so you can join us um, if you haven't already rsvp You'll get that too. Um, I also wanted to let you know that we have two Master Cycler classes coming this winter. Um, one, um, they're both community designed classes. And you might recall that the community design classes are, are not the standard class where you just come in as an individual and take the class, but a specific community takes the class together. Um, and um, we have um, Central Cultural is hosting the, uh, an all Spanish language class, um, January and February. Um, so if you know folks that live in Washington County and would love to take the class in Spanish, um, then please spread the word. We do have, I just put it um, uh, in, in uh, the Master Cycler page and, and um, so you could look for it also in Master Cycler Facebook group um, and, and Master Cyclers of Color um, group. I announced it there. And then the other class is a North by Northeast Community Health Center. Um, I see many of you in the room that uh, took the last class as well. Um, you, um, we are going to do another class with North by Northeast Community Health Center. Um, and so please um, spread the word that, that there's going to be a class in January and in February. And if, if um, in that class, the North by Northeast Community Health Center is um, focused on Black health. And so this class will be um, really connecting and designing uh, for folks who are Black, especially in Portland and um, area. So um, please spread the word um, for both of those that are coming up. So um, in my final announcement, um, some of you know, and some of you do not know, but I did want to make sure to um, let you know that um, I have decided that it is time after 13 years working with the Master of Cycler program and 28 years working for the city of Portland, that um, I, it's time to let someone else take the reins. And so I will be retiring um, from the Master of Cycler program and from the city. Um, those of you who didn't, who already heard the news, um, and kept joking that I was going to change it, not really do it because it was April 1st. You're kind of right <laughs> because I've moved it to July 1st now. I will be here um, through till July 1st, um, but I am really retiring. <laughs> it's really going to happen. <laughs> no joke this time. So, um, yeah, so um, we'll be talking more about that in the newsletter about um, how, um, how that transition will go and how, um, how we can recruit for another really fantastic um, person to take the next um, stage of this program. So I do want to say it's been an incredible honor to work with the most, the best volunteers on the planet. Uh, you all are so great. And I love your passion and um, your commitment and do want to thank you um, for, for this opportunity to, to work with you. So I'm all, I'm all teary over here. It's Tammy. I'm teary. 
<laughs> oh, thanks, Sammy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you've done such a great job. I really appreciate you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Now, don't make me teary. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> don't just start. All right. Yeah. So we are going to get started. Um, so um, we have a really great couple of um, folks uh, lined up to, to present with us tonight. Um, I've been thinking about ways that we can continue to engage in the community. I've also been hearing Master Cycle is really concerned about um, with seeing the waste that, that you're seeing out in your streets, in your neighborhoods, and, and on our beaches and rivers. And um, it's been a long time coming that Master Cyclers and Solve come together and think about how we can work together. And I'm, I was super excited that Jacqueline was open to it and, and brought it to her team and thought about it. And so um, Jacqueline is um, going to be presenting with us. She is um, the outreach coordinator for, for Solve. Maybe I forgot to look, put my notes. She'll, she'll give me the correct title. <laughs> Sorry about that, Jacqueline. Uh, but she is going to talk us through all of the um, programs that, that they have. I have been, you know, talking with her about how master cyclers have kind of a specific criteria about what we can do that counts as master cycle hours. And so she's kind of selected the kinds of programs that, that seem like a really good match where we can take some leadership um, we can either lead or organize or adopt a per, um, street or a beach or a neighborhood um, or organize a specific an event. Um, or you can also assist in organizing or you can create a team together to organize a cleanup. Um, so those are um, different ways that that, um, that master cyclers can play a role. Um, and, and Jacqueline will be talking through the programs. And then we, after that, um, we, we're going to talk about equity and, and um, really looking at making sure that as we're thinking about cleanups um, and thinking about trash and litter in general, that we don't, that we make sure that, 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 we're not causing further harm for folks that are really experiencing um, a big problem with litter and trash. I, I don't know if you all see, saw the KATU news article um, that just, or news story that came out um, last week where they talked about um, that a lot of the, the waste and trash that you see near where people are living in their camps is being dumped on them um, by housed people. <laughs> and so it's really um, a problem that, that um, there's a lot of waste around, but also when we do cleanups, we need to be sensitive and understanding about how to do it in a way that's not causing harm to folks that are trying to live near the places where we're cleaning up. Um, and I really am hoping that we don't choose to work in areas that are actually camps. And, and Barbie will be talking about the great program that they do through um, ground score um, in the camps area so that you can see that that, that work is being done in a way that's really um, tactful and, and with, with compassion. So with those two, with that introduction, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to um, let Jacqueline take the reins, um, and I'm going to ask that um, you can put questions in the chat as they come up for you. If they seem urgent, um, I will um, interrupt um, Jacqueline for them. Um, we also, I'll be looking for them for the end, but you can also, um, if you don't have a way to to type into the chat, um, there will be opportunity for you to raise your hand or, or um, um, ask questions at the end so that everyone gets a chance to, do, to ask questions, okay? So um, Jacqueline, you're, it's yours. Thank you so much for, I do really appreciate you coming. I'm excited about this opportunity to work in partnership with Solve. I think it's a long time coming. So thank you so much for being here tonight. Of course, thank you so much, Lauren, for inviting me. Um, I'm very excited to present to all of you. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen um, and I do have a presentation, um, just so you know, you know, it's in both English and Spanish. Um, so I'm gonna just pause for a second after um, the English slide so folks can see the slide in Spanish. Um, so again, my name is Jacqueline Sisto Lopez. I am Solve's Community Engagement Manager, and I'm so excited to be here today um, to talk about ways that y'all can get involved with Solve. 
So Solve restores and preserves Oregon's environment by mobilizing the power of volunteers and partners across the state of Oregon. Um, we bring diverse communities together to improve the health and safety of our neighborhoods and natural areas, which include our coasts, rivers, parks, and forests. And our mission is simple, to bring Oregonians together to improve our environment and build a legacy of stewardship. So just a brief history of SOLVE. We were founded in 1969 by Governor Tom McCall and originally SOLVE was an acronym and it stood for Stop Litter and Vandalism. We hosted our first statewide beach cleanup in 1984. We were the first state to do a statewide beach cleanup, which is really exciting. Um, and then we celebrated our 50 year anniversary in 2019. And our work has really expanded from when we are founded. So currently our work also includes urban litter cleanups and natural area habitat restoration. Okay, Jacqueline, can I ask you to pause for one second? Of um, course. Is any, I have a question. Tengo una pregunta para las, las personas que hablan español. Están usando el, la interpretación? Porque no está funcionando. No se escucha, casi no se no. escucha. A veces para y otra vez sigue. Y uh -huh. aparte está muy despacio uh, la traducción. Ok. Sí, tampoco no, no se escucha para mí. Estoy ¿Hay otras personas que están ahí adentro? En el, en el... Sí, uh, Lauren, yo estoy ahí. Ok. ¿Y puedes oír? Sí, cuando está, cuando está haciendo la interpretación simultánea, sí la escucho. En estos momentos estamos esperando por la información que aparece en pantalla. Pero mientras hay diálogo, sí se escucha, al menos en, en, mi, en mi sistema, en mi aparato. Ok. Por eso Narcisa está, está uh, usando el, el globo abajo. ¿Puedes ver eso? ¿Y estás conectado al español o...? Estás tratando de escucharlo aquí en inglés. Ok. No sé qué pasó. Sorry, we're having some technical difficulties with the interpretation, but I think we're, we're good now. Um, it seems like it's working for others. I'm not sure why I cannot go in there, but I've gotten, good <laughs> I've gotten confirmation that it's working for others. So, okay. Thank you, Jacqueline, for your, for your patience. Of course. So some of our current programs, um, we have two annual statewide events every year. Um, so the first is the Oregon Spring Cleanup, which is coming up in April. Um, and then we have another in September, which is our beach and riverside cleanup. Um, and so those are just times when we do a big push for more statewide events to happen um, because we know that folks are coming out to volunteer for Earth Day in April. Um, and also in September, it's Oregon Public Lands Day. And that's another big, big day when we do a lot of service. Um, we also have volunteer-led events. The majority of our events that we have are run by our volunteers. Um, so Project Oregon is basically any project outside the city of Portland. Um, and then Detrash Portland is our program that's specific for the Portland area. Um, and the Detrash Portland also encompasses something that we've been recently doing, um, which are our urgent need cleanups. Um, so those are run by solve staff and those are addressing um, larger areas of trash usually usually those are legal dump sites um, and those are 18 and older events um, because there's usually um, a higher presence of biohazards so we really want to be careful when we're um, having volunteers come out to those events we also have our oregon adopt a river and adopt a beach program um, and i'll talk more about those in a little bit um, education is another thing that we do. So we have a service learning program for youth K through 12, um, and that's called Growing a Greener Generation. Um, and so for that program, it's a group of youth um, that can be at a school, it can be at um, a youth-led organization, 
and they choose to do two litter cleanups over the course of a year. Um, and it also comes with some educational material for them as well. Um, we also do tabling and outreach. Um, and so similar to what I'm doing now, we do presentations, um, we table at community events um, and also do education at events as well. And we also have some Portland-based events. Um, one of those is our annual Pick It Up Portland event. Um, similar to the statewide events, we do a big push for leaders to run an event um, in the Portland metro area. And we also have our monthly downtown cleanup days, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. So Jacqueline, I'm sorry to interrupt you again. We had two Spanish speakers just enter that would like to know probably that there's there's a interpretation. And also Ricardo raised his hand, so I want to make yes. sure there's uh, I just need to confirm with Jacqueline that she will explain the Spanish slide in Spanish. If not, oh. then we need to coordinate with our translator to do the, the dialogue or the text or the, the speech. As Jacqueline is telling the information in English, she can say it in, in Spanish, and then we'll look at the slides afterwards because right now, we're not getting the simultaneous interpretation when Jacqueline is speaking on the uh, English slides. So. Oh, so, so Evelyn should be just interpreting what Jacqueline's saying. Okay. And then, yeah. And then afterwards cool. she was just gonna show the slides for Perfect. a few minutes um, so that the Spanish can be seen. Para ustedes que han llegado tarde y quieren conectar con uh, um, el español, hay un globo abajo y se puede empujar de allí y ver la palabra español y conectarse allí con el español. Y bienvenidos, gracias por estar aquí. Okay, thank you, Jacqueline, and thanks everyone. We're going to get this technology down. <laughs> Of course, if you need me to translate, I can probably just not as beautifully as Evelyn is doing right now. So you let me know. <laughs> okay. Um, so who we are today, again, I mentioned um, our recent edition of our urgent need cleanups. Um, here's a picture of the results, the before and after. Um, in 2020, obviously it was a difficult year um, for events. Um, but we still had um, some folks turn out, which is great. Um, you can see we had 12,384 total volunteers um, and 124,793 pounds of trash collected. Um, we also piloted our Growing a Greener Generation program and had six participating schools and groups. Um, and in 2021, um, it's really exciting to see those numbers um, double um, the total number of volunteers, um, and then seeing the, the huge leap in the amount of trash that we've been able to collect. Um, again, that's really due to the, to the urgent cleanups. Um, and we've also had a really big increase in folks participating in our Growing a Greener Generation um, program, which is really exciting. Okay, now in Spanish. And I think we've lost Evelyn again because I, we're not getting any of the Spanish interpretation. Okay. Try that now. Is that working? Se puede oír a Maybe Ricardo, I'll make you interpreter too. Can, would oh, you mind? Yo no, es, yo no escucho oh. nada, nada. Perdí nada. todo lo, lo que ha pasado. Okay. okay. Um, we can Narcisa, try it. Yeah. Uh, hay que ir uh, um, abajo, se puede ver un globo, y haz clic en el globo y ver que hay una palabra, se, se dice Spanish, y clicar allí. Uh, ya la tengo uh, cliqueado todo ahí, antes lo estaba escuchando, pero ahorita ya tiene no mucho que no, que no se okay. escucha. Ok, Ay, a ver. Cuál forma estoy en la misma condición. Tal vez, tal vez, Evelyn todavía está aquí. Tal vez perdimos. I think we might have actually lost her all yeah. together. Well, if you want to make me interpreter and I can butcher it. <laughs> so like, you, you are, like, yeah. You are my hero. Let me thank you. <laughs> okay, I just 
made you see if that works. Oh, but yeah, try that. Okay. Uh, ¿Me escuchan todos? Incluyendo. Uh, we, uh, we hear you in the English, so you need to, it should. Ay, ay, ay. ¿Me escuchan no. todos ahora? Yo sí lo escucho ya ahorita. Sí. Ok, entonces creo que ya estamos, Lauren, a menos que tú me escuches también. But everybody hears you. Oh, everybody hears me, sorry. <laughs> so, that's not working. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, let me log out and log back in. Maybe that's no, what I need to do. That, no, it shouldn't, make, it should make it so I can turn you into an interpreter right as we speak. Um, so I did that. Oh. We will solve me. this problem. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's just not, it's acting up. Let me try again. Oh boy. English. Thank you everyone for your patience. This has not been a problem in the past. Usually it's a dream to work with. Try that, Ricardo. Say. Sí. <laughs> oh wait. Now does everyone did everyone just hear what Ricardo said? No. Okay, good. I think we're on now. We're perfect. Okay. It worked. Go for it, Jacqueline. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, this is just a little bit about how you can be involved if you're interested in being involved with SALT's work. Um, so obviously the first and most important is to volunteer. Um, so you can attend um, a SALT event, which happen all throughout the state of Oregon. Um, most of them happen on Saturday mornings, um, but other ones happen during the day. Um, you can check that on our event calendar. Another way to volunteer is to be an event assistant. So this would be at events um, where SALT is running the event, like the downtown cleanup or an urgent need cleanup and you come a little bit early to the event and you help us with registration and check-in um, and those are vital roles. Um, another one is to be a SOLVE ambassador. Um, so currently this program is paused due to COVID, but SOLVE gets a lot of requests to table at events um, or do education. And so it's really helpful if, um, we have volunteers who can support with that um, and share about SOLVE, the mission of SOLVE and the work that we do. Um, we also have the Adopt a River and Adopt a Beach program. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and then another way to be involved is if you want to run your own event, um, you can be an event leader. So SOLVE offers training um, and all the supplies that you need to run your event, as well as registration and recruitment support. Um, and the final way to be involved is to support us financially by donating. Um, we do have one-time options, ongoing monthly options um, by being an event sponsor. Um, we also offer corporate volunteering throughout out of office into nature. And we also sell some really cool merchandise. So you can own your own litter grabber um, or a nice solved t-shirt. Okay, um, so a little bit more about our Adopt-A-River program. So this is an ongoing commitment to care for um, part of a waterway. So that could be a river, a stream, a lake, um, and obviously not the whole river, um, but just a piece of it. Um, and so individuals can adopt a river, groups can adopt a river. Um, Really the commitment is to cleanups or restoration events along your piece of your waterway um, every year over the course of two years. And SOLVE provides all of the cleanup supplies, 
We also have small grants for project expenses. Um, we also have free training resources and support that we'll offer to you. All right, we also have an adopt a beach program. Um, so the commitment for that is three cleanups per year over the course of two years. And very similarly, you can go online and see the beaches that have already been adopted. Um, and so you'll select a beach or a piece of a beach to adopt um, and care for. And we'll provide the same thing, the free cleanup supplies, the small grants for the project expenses, as well as training resources and support for planning your event. All right, um, so we also have our downtown Portland cleanups um, and those happen every month. This month, that's a little different. Usually, um, well, I guess for the next two months, they're a little irregular. We usually do them on the third Wednesday of every month, um, but because of the holidays and we have um, a special day of service, um, the dates are changed. So for December, it's gonna be on Thursday, December 16th. And then for January, we're celebrating our Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service. So we're gonna have our event on Monday, January 17th. So the event runs from 9 a.m. to 11.30. If you're an event assistant, you'll arrive before that time. Um, and we'll have four check-in locations. Um, these are our typical check-in locations, but they sometimes shift. So we have um, a check-in location at the Old Church, one at Providence Park, one at the Benson Hotel, and then one at the Waterfront Park at Burnside Bridge. Um, and then I know for the MLK Junior Day of Service, we'll also have one on the Central East Side. Um, and then, yeah, again, event assistants are the folks who support with our setup um, and they help us out a lot, just making sure registration runs smoothly. So if you're interested in that, um, you can sign up on our website. Usually there's a separate tab for event assistance or you can reach out to me via email and I'll connect you with my coworker. Okay, um, so I know that this was, um, I think the option that sounded the best for folks in terms of meeting the requirements for a service that you need um, and it's really exciting because you can create your own event. So really in the location you want. Um, yeah, so we're really excited um, to have folks become a solve leader. So the first step of this process is you're going to register as a solve leader on our website. Um, it's a really quick form, just some contact information. And then your second step is optional, but I think it's really helpful. Um, so you can attend a new leader training and those happen. Um, there's lots of options throughout the month. Um, and depending on if you are in the Project Oregon bucket or if you are in the D-Trash Portland, depending on your location, um, you can go to either a Portland new leader training or you can go to a statewide new leader training. Um, and if the dates for those don't work, you can also set up a time to meet with the community event coordinator. Um, there's one for Portland, her name is Alexandra. And then there's one for the state and her name is Emily. You can meet um, and just kind of talk through your event and get all of that training. Um, next, you're going to pick a location for your cleanup or restoration project. Um, we support both. Um, so a restoration project would be like the removal of invasive plants, the planting of native plants or the maintenance of those projects. Next, you'll plan disposal and property permission. These are important um, and necessary for having an event with Solve. Um, then you're going to po post your event on, your, on the website. You can decide if it's public or private. And then you'll or order your event supplies, um, recruit volunteers, and then you can apply um, for a small grant reimbursement. And then you'll also want us um, to send your results. This is after the event.
Okay. Um, so this is just a brief overview of the leader expectations and responsibilities. Um, so as a leader, you're going to obviously identify the project that you're wanting to do. Um, you're going to submit an application with us, which is online, secure property permission, decide, um, this is so you can order your supplies. So what equipment will you need to do that? You'll also need to think about the number of volunteers that you want, um, set up disposal, and then manage your budget. If you're using our small grants, Reimbursement, we reimburse typically um, up to $50. Um, and then I have another grant that I'll talk about in a second. Um, and then also volunteer recruitment. Um, you can do that however way you want by social media, making flyers, um, posting on community calendars, talking to your friends or community. It may be just a little slower, Jacqueline, since Ricardo's being a sport. <laughs> of course, yeah. Do you want me to pause on these or to talk slower? Just talk a little slower when you're, of when you're doing course. it. Okay. You're, not, you're not going fast, but it's just a lot when you don't, don't get to interpret as for life. <laughs> of course. Yes, it's a lot. I understand. Okay. Um, so the day of the event... Um, you're, as a leader, you'll be responsible for supervising the volunteer check-in. Um, you'll also be delivering a safety talk. So that outlines what volunteers should not pick up. Um, also talking about dangers like traffic or weather sometimes. Um, and also talking about what happens if something happens and you need to make an incident report, all of that will happen in the safety talk. Um, so you'll be responsible for delivering that. And you'll also need to make sure that all participants sign a waiver form. Um, so again, liability. Some, most folks, if they register online, will have already filled one out, but if folks come the day of the event, they'll need to sign a waiver. Um, you're also responsible for the disposal of the waste, recycling um, as needed. And then of course, to thank volunteers for coming out. After your event, you're going to report all the project results to SOL staff, and then you'll either return or mail volunteer waiver forms to SOL. And if you um, got equipment like a litter grabber, um, litter grabbers or vests, you're going to want to return that to the office um, so they can be washed. And then optional, um, apply for a small grant from Solve. We encourage you to do so. Um, if you wanted to have donations um, for food um, or volunteer appreciation gifts, you can also do that um, from local businesses, um, things like that. Um, you can also do some outreach via media, if that's something that you're interested in, um, for getting the word out on your event. Okay, um, and the support that Saul provides, um, we support with the project planning um, so we do have a project planning resource guide, which is available online. When you sign up as a volunteer leader, you'll get access to our leader portal. And that's basically a step-by-step -step guide to plan your event. Um, so a lot of the information I'm sharing today, you can go back and find on that leader portal. There's also going to be a YouTube video with how to submit an event on our website. Um, you'll be able to order supplies, you'll have access to all the waivers, um, some editable flyers as well. Um, and then if you need support, um, we have things like the property permission waiver, um, marketing materials. And so then the supplies that we will provide um, are garbage bags, gloves, safety vests, first aid kit, sharps containers if you're trained in sharps. Um, and then signs for your site. Um, and if you live close enough to pick up 
in um, from our downtown Portland office, we will give you reusable supplies. Um, so like a reusable vest, reusable gloves, um, and litter grabbers as well. So you'll pick those up from our office and then return them within a week of hosting your event. And then we also, if you want your event to be public, open to anyone coming to volunteer, we will post that on our website. Um, so again, that supports with volunteer recruitment. And then we also have the small grants. So oh, um, I wanted to, to let Ricardo know that I just put in the chat the, the slides and Ricardo, it might be easier for you to be able to interpret if you if you look at the slides because you'll be able to see the Spanish page. Um, so you can click from the chat and then look through the Spanish. And those of you who are listening are all welcome to look at the slides as well on there if you have that in Spanish. So thank you for letting me interpret <laughs> interrupt one more time. Of course. Thank you for sharing that. All right, um, so this is just a little bit about um, a great grant that we got from Metro. So this is to support with the costs that come with disposal. So this is our Metro disposal grant reimbursement. Um, so it is unlimited funds um, to reimburse you for the cost of disposal. So oftentimes this can be really expensive. So like ordering a dumpster, um, or services that come and pick up your trash. Um, that would be like 1-800-GOT-JUNK or Junket, companies like that. Um, or if you are taking the trash to a waste disposal facility, um, the fees that come with that. So we will reimburse all of the costs that come with any of those options. Um, as long as the event occurs within these map boundaries. Um, so you can see the map, it's the Portland metro area. Um, and events can run until June 30th, 2022. That's when our funding ends. And of course, please talk with your community event coordinator before you make a purchase, just so you know. So they can talk you through, do you need a dumpster? Is it going to be easier to just take something to the dump? Um, would a pickup service be better? Um, just talk it through before. And I've included the link for our website um, on the bottom, and that just has more information about it. So, yeah. And one thing I wanted to, to add to that point um, for Jacqueline is that that mass, because mass recyclers are partnering with all our local jurisdictions, many of them have funds that, that could make it so you don't have to pay for it and then be reimbursed. Um, so you should really talk to your local jurisdictions um, and see what kind of resources are available there before you start fronting your own money and then getting it back paid back from Solve because we do have partnerships um, with our local jurisdictions. Like who in the local jurisdiction would you speak to? Self. I muted myself already. Um, it depends on where you live and, and I'll give you that, I'll make sure that you all know how to reach your local jurisdiction and wherever you live. Um, yeah. All right, so these are some of the questions to consider when you're first planning your event. So what type of event do I wanna lead? Obviously that's, do you wanna lead a, a litter cleanup in your neighborhood? Do you want to lead a cleanup along a waterway, along a beach? Do you wanna lead a restoration event? Um, do you want to remove invasive plants? Do you want to plant uh, native plants? Just considering that you have a lot of options. So what makes sense for your community, what you're interested in? Also thinking about how big of a group of volunteers am I confident leading and anticipate I could recruit. We usually encourage folks to start with 30. Um, running your first event, it can be a lot. It's a lot of work. Um, and if you only have one person organizing, it's a lot to do registration, 
getting folks the supplies they need and um, doing a safety talk. So if you partner with more leaders, um, you can lead a bigger event, but it's always nice to start small. Um, also thinking about your location. Um, so if you're in the Portland metro area and you wanna travel all the way to the beach, make sure the time makes sense for you. Um, it's always nice to run events in your own community because you know what's going on there. Um, you know where the trash is, you know what restoration work needs to be done. But again, you're welcome to do it um, in any area that you would like, um, as long as you have property permission. Um, obviously considering potential dates, keeping in mind the weather, um, snow, smoke, um, also heat, um, that's something that we've had to consider now as well. Um, thinking about the time of day, when will people be able to participate? Um, and again, if you want your events to be open to the public or a private event just for your friends and family or an organization that you work with. Okay, so I do wanna give a plug for one of our upcoming events. It's our Oregon Spring Cleanup. And the date right now is Saturday, April 23rd. We're actively recruiting volunteer leaders to host events um, for this date, as well as the week before and the week after. Um, it's an annual event. We get a lot of volunteers looking for places to volunteer. And it's great because we're celebrating Earth Day. So what better time to run an environmental volunteer event than, than April? Okay, and just to end with a quote, this is by Governor Tom McCall. Heroes are not giant statues framed against a red sky. There are people who say, this is my community and it is my responsibility to make it better. All right, and here is my email, my contact information, um, as well as SALT's website, our social media handles. Um, feel free to reach out if you have questions. Um, comments or want to be involved and are having trouble, I'm happy to direct you or answer any, answer any questions. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Um, I think it'd be good to, to actually take a little time to answer some, do some Q&A now for, for about SOLVE and then we can um, hear um, about the GLITTER program. So um, I haven't seen any questions in the chat. Mostly I've probably been <laughs> interrupting too much for people to have questions, but hopefully um, if people wanna raise your hands um, or put questions in the chat or, um, you know, or click your raise hand, do people have questions? I see Shannon has a question. Yeah, hi, um, I was curious, uh, would you say it's common for people to uh, be an event assistant and then be an event leader? Or is it common for people to just jump in and be an event leader? Yeah, so it's really what you feel comfortable with. I think the best way is definitely to like attend an event first. Um, and that way you see how an event is run. Um, and then definitely to be an event assistant because then you work on the other side. Um, it just gives you more experience. We actually used to have like a hands-on training that was offered um, that we stopped during doing during COVID, which was basically to like practice setting up an event. So I think it's really helpful to be an event assistant first. Um, but yeah, it's definitely about your comfort level. It's not, um, not a necessity. I would um, also like to invite folks who speak Spanish, please do feel free also to ask your question. You can unmute and we can hear your question. If you want to ask any questions in Spanish, we'll, we'll all interpret your question since um, 
Ricardo's in the in the Spanish room. It looks like there's also some questions about the disposal. Um, so someone asked, is reimbursement for dumping fees at transfer station? Um, yes. So the reimbursement can cover that, whether it's the Metro grant or it's our small grant. Um, and then someone else said, I'm curious about the disposal options. So um, those would be ordering a dumpster, getting a service like 1-800-GOT-JUNK um, to come and pick up your trash for you or taking it yourself to a transfer station. Um, and other options are also looking for free disposal. So you could ask like a local business who has a dumpster if you could use their dumpster um, or sometimes schools will allow you. Um, so yeah. Thank you. Um, So um, actually we have the city of Gresham and, and Clackamas County here um, and actually Washington County. I'm wondering if e any of you could speak a little bit about some of the resources that you know exist in your area so that people can hear. I'm putting you on the spot. I didn't ask you all to do that ahead of time. But it, in most of the local dressing, so, so I'm seeing Megan with Gresham raise her hand. Could you, do you want to speak a little bit to what, what are available? Sure. Um, so I would be happy to talk to anyone that's um, working in Gresham or doing a cleanup in Gresham. Um, I don't have an official thumbs up to say this, but I, I would think that if you wanted to use our dumpsters, we could find a way to make that happen. Um, and we do have, um, some folks on our operations team um, that have come out and picked up um, in the past. So if it happens on a Saturday, usually they'll say like, let's come up with a place for you to leave the bags and then we'll come pick them up um, on the next working day. Um, so I can put my email in the chat and it sounds like Lauren's gonna be following up with um, the local contacts. So um, more than happy to talk about that. And then, you know, Lauren, you mentioned earlier about um, Sorry, I just realized how fast I was talking. <laughs> um, you mentioned earlier about how um, jurisdictions might be able to pay for some of the disposal up front and get reimbursed. And I would be happy to, um, to talk about that as well if folks wanna try going that route. Um, but I, in working with the schools a lot, I, I would also think that many of them would be happy to provide space um, and could connect you to the right folks to ask permission. Um, it's a great service that you're providing to the community. So we'll definitely find a way to help you out there. Yeah, and they can really be great advisors for even that connection to the haulers that Jacqueline was talking about because the local jurisdictions have relationships with haulers. So they can be a great um, connector for you. So they're one of your first people you should think to talk with. Um, because your master cyclers are already connected with those local um, resources. Tammy asked, who, how do I find them? It's in the handbook, but I'll do as a follow-up um, to send out an email with, with all the contacts again with, that are specific to, to this. Stacy, do you have anything to add to what Mag Megan just said for, for Clackamas County? Um, I largely echo that. We don't have a special line item on our budget that says for this kind of cleanup. However, that doesn't mean that we don't do it. Um, the down river cleanup that happens on, um, uh, gosh, it's on the, I think maybe the Malala river. I can't remember which river that's on, but we uh, work with the haulers and the, we get the haulers to donate a, uh, a large dumpster for that event. So we have connections with them for those disposals. Um, we can also potentially provide funds if that's an easier way. And also I'm happy to talk with anyone who wants to um, get one 
get a cleanup started and help brainstorm all those logistics things as well. So I love that kind of thing. <laughs> there, that's right. the Clackamas view. <laughs> okay. So, and I know I've spoken with the city of Portland and they're also um, very, they've gotten uh, support for this kind of work as well. So I can connect anybody who's in Portland. I'm gonna go into the Spanish room for a second and see if Ricardo has anything to add for, for Washington County. I'll be right back. Ricardo, hi. Okay, thank you. All right, so so Ricardo, um, very similar to what Stacy and Megan was saying, I think that he uh, was wise in giving kind of some boundaries around what kind of support that you, he's not really going to have funds for a five or six thousand dollar kind of collection event, um, but if they're kind of smaller scale uh, waste events, they can definitely um, provide technical assistance in finding a dumpster or a container or helping with small, small collection um, costs for dumps, dumping. So yeah, great questions. There was another question that came up before the, the presentation, um, Jacqueline, that maybe you can speak to um, asking about um, policies around masks and um, because it's outdoors, um, is it recommended or expected that people wear masks at these events if you're organizing your own versus if you're coming to a solve event? Um, because the statewide rules are that you don't have to wear a mask outside, but we also want to, um, the policy for the master recycler program is that we follow state rules, but also have respect and compassion for our partners that we work for with and for. And so I'm wondering if solve, um, if you want to speak to that a bit, Jocelyn. Or Jacqueline, sorry. Of course. So we at Solve are also following the state mandates. Um, so things are changing pretty rapidly. Currently at our Solve run events, we ask that folks use masks for registration and the safety talk where it's not possible to maintain six feet of distance. And then once folks are out um, at the event, whether they're out picking up litter or um, planting or removing invasive plants, they're able to remove their mask. Um, so that's our current policy. Um, but if you're planning an event and have more questions, I would encourage that you chat with your community event coordinator just to make sure you're having the most up-to-date information because obviously that's changing um, pretty rapidly. Thank you so much. Of course, I see Elizabeth has your hand raised. Hi, thank you. I have a kind of a curiosity and I, it's fine if this is not relevant, um, but the new organization Adopt One Block, do you guys have a relationship with them? Do you kind of, I don't want to say compete for resources um, or is it kind of dovetailed, but I heard some, I'm assuming you're familiar with it. Um, just wondering if there's any collaboration since I heard some similarities. And if it's off topic and of course. not appropriate, dismiss it. That's fine too. <laughs> yeah, no, Adopt One Block is a great organization. Um, I've had some meetings. Now her name is escaping me, um, but the communications person from Adopt One Block. Um, and yes, we do very similar work. Um, so they're a really great option if folks want to care for like um, a smaller part of their community. So literally like the block around your house um, and they'll send you supplies and you can go out and do a smaller cleanup um, just yourself. It could be a little bit bigger with neighbors, um, but they'll send you the supplies to do that. Um, and you commit to just caring for an area in your community. Um, so I'm actually, I adopted my block 
Um, so yeah, it's a great program. Um, I can drop their website in the chat as well. Um, yeah, so I would say that they do more smaller scale and it's more flexible. So if going to an event is a barrier, then they're a great option to get involved with. Um, but yeah, no competition. You can do both. Um, yeah, also a great organization. I'll, I'll drop it in the chat as well. Website. There's plenty of trash out there. I was going to say thank you. I do. I just appreciate it. Just wanted to hear your take on that. Um, and one thing I love about Solve and like its continued role is just its legacy in Oregon, like how it was founded, and so it's really nice to see that it's um, still really thriving and has a great place here. So. So there was a question in the chat about what counts as volunteer hours for your master recycler hours, and um, Pretty much, you know, if you're organizing or assisting in organizing, if you're, um, you know, creating an opportunity for others to join you and coming together, even if you as a team of master cyclers get together and just adopt a block or something, then yes, it counts. That I think the, um, and then even the time that you're spending just out picking up waste would count. But if you just show up at an event, um, and pick up waste and then go back home again, um, unless it's to prepare yourself to then be, take more of a leadership role, then, then um, I, it, it really can't count. Also, if you're going outside of our tri-county area, um, it needs to be inside the three counties of Washington, Clackamas, or Multnomah County to count as a master recycler hours. Um, so there's plenty of beaches, streets, and, 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 and uh, you know, as Jacqueline was saying, actually, you know your community better where, right where you live. So it's really good to look for where you are and, and start cleaning up right where you're at. Okay. So hopefully that clarifies the hours a bit. Yeah. Good. I want to make sure that we can um, give Barbie a chance to, to speak now. So Jacqueline, thank you so much for, for giving us a good scope of what how we can plug in and start connecting. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll have time to do some breakout sessions where we're going to start talking about what, you know, what interests people have. Um, and we'll definitely be connecting up and you're welcome to stay even actually and, and hear what people are talking about as they share back. Um, thank you so much. Um, it really helps give us a good sense of where we can go next to, to partner with you. Yeah. So Barbie, um, I um, really also appreciate you joining us tonight. Um, I read the, the article um, in Street Roots and was super excited. Um, I've, I've heard about you for a long time. You're an amazing leader in our community and organizing um, and, and, the, and founding and co-founding Glitter and, and um, Ground Score, really important parts of our community and doing important work. Um, so I'm hoping that you will share with us what, um, what that work is and um, also um, give us a sense of what, what some of these issues are as people start doing cleanups and how um, we can be sensitive and trauma-informed as, as we are thinking about this work. Thank you so much for being here tonight, Barbie. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. I want to thank uh, uh, I want to thank the first presenter for coming on and, and talking about solve. They are a very very integral part of uh, what we do here in Oregon, and they have been around for a very long time. Um, I'm going to surprise you by saying that. Uh, okay, first of all. Ground Score Association, I, I'm going to let you know that um, because I'm on my mobile device, I, I don't have a computer. So I'm going to have to turn off my computer or my, my camera off and on to be able to read my notes, okay? All right, thank you. So I will tell you that I am the co-founder of Ground Score Association, and Ground Score Association is a low barrier job program. It primarily works with people that are suffering from housing and income insecurity. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and read our mission statement, and it kind of gives you a little bit about who and, and what we are. I'll be, I'll be right back.
Ground score is an association of informal recyclers, dumpster divers, and other environmental workers who create and fill low barrier waste management jobs. Ground score is collectively organized and seeks to be radically inclusive, prioritizing work opportunities for those facing work and housing insecurity. Ground score seeks to build a more environmentally and socially aware community while also changing society's perception of what and who is considered valuable. Oops, wrong app. Okay. Thank you for your patience. So ground score, I was a marketing manager. Uh, I was supervising about 150 people, uh, and then I suffered a brain lesion in my speech center. I ended up becoming fully disabled, and uh, but before then, I was also running a, a really low barrier house house, um, and I dreamed of of a a work or a low barrier jobs program that anybody could get a job. And Ground Score Association is, is very radically inclusive. We include, it doesn't matter your age, your disability, your gender, uh, nothing matters. Uh, you, you get to show up as you are. Uh, we intentionally make shifts very short. Um, they're two hour shifts, so they're very quick. We do pay, uh, excuse me, workers $20 an hour, and coordinators are. Um, are on payroll and we are trash for peace employees and we make $25 an hour. So it's a living wage uh, and, and we're in the middle of expanding right now. And what we basically do is we provide tent side trash service to people living outside. Uh, I piloted a, a, a program uh, in, in February of this last year. And when we first started, the city was, we needed a bunch of help cleaning up uh, there was a lot of trash out there. We were swimming in it. I call it pandemic trash. Uh, one thing you have to understand is, is you know, the, the news story that you saw the other night, which I, I really feel that the news has not been helping us um, bring our community together. Um, but there is a lot of trash that's being put out there by folks that cannot afford, afford their garbage service. The, the trash problem is, is compounded by the pandemic and the People are, are losing their housing and losing their, you know, place, or, or a lot of different things have happened during this time. And so um, they don't have anywhere to take it. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that this program is so important too, is because it, 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 it you know, we keep, we keep the areas around that are clean around tent site and we provide tent site trash service just like you would have at your house. You know, uh, we don't clean up, you know, we, I have people ask me all the time, well, do you clean up, clean it up for them? No, we, we don't. Uh, we, we maybe start that way, but pretty soon people are picking up their own trash and we're picking up bags and we're just cleaning the litter that is around homeless camp. A lot of times because of the wind, if there's a lot of tents, that, that trash will get blown into the street. A lot of places have illegal dumping. And so that, that, those items we also will collect uh, and clean up, uh, but primarily people do it for themselves. Um, one of the missions, one of the part of our mission is, is we want to change, uh, you know, people's perception of who and what are and what is valuable. Um, when we first started in 2019, and so we're very, very young, we have not been around very long, uh, is we were ambassadors and we would lead solve volunteers in the community cleanup in hopes to be a kind of a bridge maker. You know, we would explain our culture, uh, our homeless culture, about what we consider garbage and, and maybe what you don't and why those things are important to us. So it was a really great thing. And then the pandemic hit and there's a lot of limitations. And so and during this season, it has not exactly went that way. And because we have so many people living outside we really did need to have, uh, you know, a group of people that could go and, and build relationships with folks. Uh, one time cleanups are really wonderful, especially if you want to make a great impact. But those 
our service is consistent. We some places we come twice a week, some places we come once a week. Uh, we now right now have 16 different routes that we're doing, and and we're we will be growing by I, I think about approximately like 15 more routes that will happen throughout the city of Portland and also uh, into the outer East County uh, area. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I want to share some numbers with you that is pretty dramatic. Uh, I'm going to. So I st we started the, the litter collection uh, for the city of Portland on February 17th of this year, and then we all and then we started in April of this year with the Central East Side. So, um, but so those numbers kind of, and then all it also grew. Okay, so let me go back to my note screen here. And if you can read them slowly, Barbie, so that, that Ricardo has a chance of, of translating, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Anytime you need me to slow down, Ricardo, let me know. And Lauren, if he says something, just, you know, give me a thumbs up because I can see you. It's just if he needs me to slow down, give me a hand, hand sign, okay? So for the city of Portland, just those totals alone, um, so far we've collected 7,218 bags of garbage, 1,037 miscellaneous items. And what we mean by miscellaneous items, it could be anything from a crate to a couch. Okay. Uh, we've collected 180,908 pounds. We've also collected 35,387 sharks. We've provided 1,413 worker shifts, which translates into 2,826 hours. And during that time frame, we had 111 or 112 new workers that were brand new to Ground Score Association. And then in the Central East Side Industrial Council, which is the Lower Southeast, we started on April 26th of this year. And in that district, we've collected 1,249 bags. 535 miscellaneous items, 76,444 pounds, 4,369 sharks, and we've had 281 worker shifts, which is 562 hours. And given 30 new people, 30 new workers opportunities for work. And then I'm just going to pop the total pro program um, numbers into the chat. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. I am still technically what they consider homeless. I live in a tiny home village called Hazelnut Grove, which is right now unsanctioned. We are in the process of, of we've, we've passed the process with, with the city, uh, or actually with the county, with the Joint Office of Homelessness uh, through their shelter to housing continuum. But I'm still technically homeless. Um, my dream is that we have you know, the, the news paints a very grim picture. One thing I want to say is, is I don't want you guys to stay away from homeless camps. I think that we all need support in very special ways. 
And if you're organizing to clean up, there's a lot of different ways to go about that. You can all, I tell folks is that really all it is is about is just saying hello and saying, hey, I'm going to be here. And it could even be possibility if you have houses folks that you're, you know, that you're familiar with in your neighborhood, that you invite them to be a part of the cleanup. You know, sometimes it's about wanting to be included. The reason ground score is so important is that we provide the week, the, you know, the twice a week service. We provide sharps containers. We provide trash bags. We provide friendship. You know, approximately about 75% of, of, of the workers uh, that work for ground score are still living outside. Um, one, of the, one of the things that we do is we, we, we don't tell people, oh, you, you need to change this or you need to change that. You know, uh, it's, life has been a struggle for a lot of us. And so as we, you know, we call this a hand up instead of a hand out. So as we, we have successes in our life, we show, you know, we share those with each other and we show those by example. You know, there's been a lot of people that have come to work for Ground Score that their lives have changed. You know, it's only four hours a week is what we can give them right now until we expand out more. So, um, and, and we've made huge impacts. I want to tell you that we started in, in certain areas of the city. Our sharps numbers went up like 35%. It was astronomical. I, it was shocking. And in those areas, since we've been providing service, the same place that we were getting 3,300 sharps, and it makes your brain break after counting that many, now we're getting less than 100. And that, my friend, gives gives my heart a reason to cheer. You know, um, I'm not saying that people stop using. I'm saying that now they're more conscientious of, of their area. A lot of times these things are happening, happening by people that are passing by, maybe people that are using from their car. There's a lot of reasons that there's this thing, these things were happening. And in these areas, they had not had service. And once we had a, a baseline and we had worked those areas for a while, it is huge, huge impact. And, you know, when I first, if somebody would have told me the first week that we started that it would be where it is today, I would not have believed them. I wouldn't have. You know, um, my goal is I want to see Portland, you know, come together as neighbors as a whole, or actually Portland and, and the surrounding areas, because I really appreciate all the folks from all the different counties being here. Uh, I want to thank all you for, for joining us today. So um, I want to let, ask now if, if you have any questions about, that I can answer for you. Sí, es, y hay invitación a, para preguntas en español también. Anyone have questions for Barbie? Um, I have a question. Um, it is, it, it sounds really, really awesome. So are there um, volunteer opportunities or how we can help get involved with, with Ground Score? We don't have any, uh, I mean, volunteer opportunities. I mean, if you want to come and join, you know, come out and join us while we're cleaning. Uh, we don't have any formalized things as of yet. But that is, as we grow out, that is something that I'm looking forward to because I think it's really important for that piece of the community building, you know, uh, to come in. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I will tell you that, you know, when we say trauma-informed tra trauma -informed care, you have to understand that we're coming at, from it as a peer. And, and even, I mean, even me, I'm, I mean, I don't live in a tent anymore. I actually live in a really nice house, right? So it's not, my life is not like, like what they're experiencing right now. So you, they have peers, they have people that understand. And so there's that, that expectation, you know, we, we got to drop that expectation. It's pretty much just, you know, a smile and, 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 and uh, you know, and it's going to be just like going into a new place, you're going to feel uncomfortable, but that's, that's part of it, you know? So um, I just, uh, um, but yes, we are we are going to build out opportunities, and also we do take donations. We, you know, just had our big Christmas party, and and we uh, have a um, 
you know, always opportunities for that. Um, and uh, we have our, our general meeting once a month. And like today, we had a couple of volunteers that had brought food for the meeting. So there's, there's things you can do like that. You know, uh, if you have donations of, of supplies that you want, um, you can find on our website how, a, a way to contact through the email. Um, and uh, we'll get back to you with any of that. So it is winter time, and we do hand out supplies to people that were serviced. Like I have, we got a bunch of donations for, for hooded sweatshirts. I'm going to be passing them out tomorrow as I go around on my route. So, and that's a great question, Shannon. I think um, I do want to be clear that that um, my intention of inviting Barbie wasn't necessarily for us to learn how we can volunteer. Um, it, you know, in, in the camps um, or around healthless communities, but as much for us to understand that that, that that work is being done by the community themselves. And also how can we be sensitive because wherever we are, we may be next to campers. And, and, um, and so that it's a great question to ask, how can we volunteer and support? And I'm glad you asked it. I just also wanna um, show that, that um, the reason that I think it's so critical that Barbie's here is, is so that we can understand in whatever project we do, the best way we can volunteer is to make sure that our cleanup events are, are, um, are trauma-informed. Like Barbie said, understanding that we are next to people who might be living there while we're cleaning and being respectful in that space. Uh, I see Megan has a hand. Oh, do you want to speak to that, Barbie, before we... I just wanted to add a little addendum to this. You have to kind of imagine, like, your front yard, right? So when you see a tent, you know, you give a broad space. You want to, you know, we walk in some areas, we walk right down the middle of the street. And the only reason is, is we recognize that that's somebody's front yard. So without, you know, we're not going to go over there without permission. Okay. Sorry, Megan? Thank you, um, Barbie. It's so impressive to see how Ground Square has grown over the past year and a half here, two years. So thank you for all the work that you're doing. Um, I'm really curious to learn a little bit more about um, the East County stuff that you teased and wondering if you've had any conversations with folks in Gresham. Um, I know as a growing organization, it can be tough because there's a lot of people who want to support, but um, expansion needs to happen really thoughtfully. So I'm just wondering if you guys, have, if you could speak to that well, a little bit more. I will. Uh, so here, contracts are a funny thing and you have to know that Ground Score got this opportunity with like 50 workers and, and maybe five, softly five coordinators and, and I, uh, just came off disability in June, so I did. I I was full time in June. Okay, so we're that just that young, and so it is a thoughtful process. Uh, the contracts did not get all the way through until just recently. And city of Portland, I have a bunch of maps that I'll go through, and I'll go scouting. Uh, the city or Gresham and those outlining areas, or excuse me, are with the with the uh, Joint Office of Homelessness, which is the Multnomah County aspect of that. Some of those will be sort of like my best description, and I don't mean this in any. This is not uh, meant to be disparaging in any way. It's going to be kind of po politically motivated. It's going to be like high impact areas. Um, I know through the holidays, or I, I, I have meetings that have been on my my uh, my calendar, and they've been uh, canceled for whatever reason. Uh, I, I don't have the answer to why those meetings have been canceled, um, but it will be kind of the same process. We'll get a, a notification from one of the the county partners, and we'll go and look at an area, or make you know make suggestions, uh, get to know the campers for you know. Um, and start service. I mean, it's pretty rapidly once it starts, and we'll be doing six routes in those outlining areas. Uh, now, it could be like into January before that happens, um, and it's 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 just kind of about timing. I mean, we have now approximately like seventy people that are working on a regular basis. Uh, well, that's not quite true. So we have like 
66 to 69 shifts throughout the week. Um, and those are shared with about through about 75 people. Some people work two days a week. Some people only work one. Some people will, will work. Uh, we have three different programs. We have an environmental recovery program. We have a, a, re, uh, a can depot where people bring in their cans. And then, um, and then uh, the glitter. And, and I haven't said this yet, but what glitter means is ground score association leading inclusively together through environmental recovery. So anyway, I hope that answers the question. Megan, did that answer your question? Sorry, yes, it does. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. okay. All right, other questions that people have? Hay preguntas en español, tal vez, o? No. And I will say too, it, you don't have to be homeless to work for ground score. It could be, we have a lot of people that in housing that are, that are struggling with poverty and just need to make a little extra money. Um, and so, you know, if, if you have folks that you may know that may need it hours, um, you know, it's only, it's not very much money a week. It's, it, you know, like I said, most people work uh, two, two hour shifts, which is $80, um, but it is, it does help, so. Barbie, I want to thank you again for um, telling us about the amazing work that you are just, just getting started and getting so much done already. And I think not just in the, the poundage and the stuff, but the, I think the piece that you're talking about is the, is the um, sense of quality of life that you're improving on, um, for people in our community and, and um, making it more comfortable for people to live where they are. And um, I just really want to thank you for, for your work and for your time in, in sharing that work with us tonight. <clears throat> thank you so much. I um yes we'll get woot woots. <laughs> so um, my thoughts were that that some of you have come here because you want to kind of do some organizing um, and think and working together and connecting a little bit um, and um, I do have one person here who has been uh, um, doing um, cleanups downtown. Are you still here, Julie? Maybe she stepped out. Nope, I think she must, she just was here a little bit ago, but she must've just stepped out. So um, my hope was to, to do a little bit of some breakout sessions um, and get a chance for you to, to do some chatting with people in your kind of closer to where you live um, and do some thinking about Having you share like what sounded like something that was intriguing. Why did you come into this this space? What what made you interested? Um, and see if you can find some synergies. See if you can find some things that that are like, wow, we all want to do adopt, and we're all kind of in this area. Maybe we should look for those resources. Um, or oh wow, we um, you know have very different interests um how can we help each other find those to work or you know so just spending some time together it's going to take me a few minutes to find kind of figure out how to make this breakout rooms work with all of you um but i was thinking what i would do is try to break you out i'll have um spanish-speaking folks all together in one room so i think i'll start with that um let's see if i can I'm going to create some breakout rooms and um, quickly try to move people around. Um, so maybe let's take a few minutes break while I move people around. And then I'm going to ask you all if I put you in the right places. OK, so give me five minutes to shift people around and then we'll. Um, and if you're not wanting to stay for breakout, this is a good time to check out because I'll um, <laughs> I will. Uh, 
we'll put you in a room. <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, and I, and we'll, we'll get you right into your rooms in a few minutes. Hey, Lauren, thank you so yeah. much for inviting me and thank you everyone for being here tonight. And I hope your breakout groups are great. I've had a very long day, so I'm going to say good night. Absolutely. You take care. Thanks so much, Barbie. Thank you. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. <laughs> David Cress, are you still in Willamette? Are you in North Portland? Yes, there? that's correct. I'm in okay. North Portland. Thank you. And Shannon, are you in Beaverton? I'm in Lake Oswego. Lake Oswego. Okay, thanks. Tammy, are you still in Cully? I think I saw you saying something about Clackamas. I am, I am in Clackamas. I'm over by 224 and okay. 205. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm almost there, folks. <laughs> Sarah, where are you located? Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Thank you. I had a lot of people in Beaverton, but it seems to have moved. So eight, six, nine, seven, eight, nine, five. Is that is that Mario? No. You can hear me. Sorry. Yes. Seven, eight, okay. Five. Okay. I'm gonna put you on the east side if that's all right. Like Gresham and oh, though. Okay. And, John, I'm not sure where to put you. You're downtown. Nobody else is. Lauren, I'm downtown. This is Bethany. Okay, great. Um, I was putting you in Beaverton, but I will put you downtown. That's perfect. Thank you. I work in Beaverton, but I love downtown. Yeah, that great. Um, let's see. <laughs> and Atosha, you're northeast. Actually, you're probably more 
I'm going to put you in the Gresham that's closer to you. I'm in the inner Northeast. But oh, you are? Okay. I'm closer to downtown. Okay, well, some of you are in little tiny rooms. I, Stephanie left from Gresham, so I don't have, I just have Megan and, and Mario in that room. And, and April, I don't have anybody. Oh, you are there, Stephanie. Where, why are you not showing up on my, oh, there we go. I'm gonna move you to room five. All right, and then April, I think I'm gonna put you to the down, town because I don't have anybody farther west for you. Is that all right? I think I'm closer to Lake Oswego. Okay, good. Then I'll put you there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, good. Thank you everyone for your patience. <laughs> I think I have you set and I'm, what I'll do is I'm going to put you in your rooms and if you can um, Introduce yourselves, tell folks where you live, and um, I and what again, what is it that got, brought you here? What kind of things that you think you w w want to be doing in this kind of work and with solve or with, with a cleanup or adopted block or, you know, what were your interests? Why did you come here? What did you want to know about um, CU? What kind of interests you have around working together or finding ways to leverage your work? Um, and I know that, that I put the, the Spanish um, folks together, Spanish-speaking folks together, and I know you, some of you are way out in Gresham and some are in Cornelius and Hillsboro, but you can talk about the two different areas and where you want to work in your own language. That's why I thought it'd be easier for you to be there. So um, if you have questions or if you feel like you are put in the wrong room, you can push the help button when you're in your room and I'll come to that room and, and see if I can troubleshoot for anybody. All right. Um, and I see one question in the chat before I send you off. Introduce ourselves. What brought us here? What kind of things do you want to do? Yes. Oh, I was just writing down what we were supposed to do. <laughs> yes, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, so. Thanks for doing that. All right, everyone have fun. Just get to know each other and, and do some thinking together. And, and um, we'll get back together about five minutes till just to wrap things up because there's not a lot of time left. So um, yeah, I'm open in the rooms. Bye-bye. <laughs>